In this video series, I'm going to show you mixing real live drums in Reaper. And as I said in the intro, we're going to be mixing or processing some real live drums in Reaper. But to be honest, they're not going to be real live drums. They just sound like it using real samples. So we're going to be using some drum software. And there's two reasons for this. The first one is if we used some drums I recorded, you're not going to have the raw tracks to work with on your own. And also, at the end of this video, I can give you the effects chain we used so you can get the same sounds we create in this video to use for yourself. So the drum software we're going to use is the Stephen Slate free drum software right here. So you can get it very easily to duplicate what we're doing right over here. And I'm using the Deluxe 2 Free Hugo kit. But what I did, if we go to the Mix tab, I sent the drums individually out to separate outputs. As we can see, right over here, we have kick, snare, each tom separated, and the overheads and the rooms. This way, we could treat each drum separately to get exactly the sound we want. Let's see what it sounds like right now with no processing at all just each drum separated. And also, we have some bass, guitars, and a vocal going along with the track, so you can hear the drums in context. Let's hear the drums by themselves. While they sound pretty good from the start, I think we could improve this dramatically. Let's start with the kick. We'll solo it and hear what it sounds like at first. I like to start with some compression to smooth out the performance, but also make the kick sound more punchy and upfront. We'll go to the effects on this track. I'll go to my favorites and choose Rea Comp, which is a plugin that comes with Reaper. So I know you have it, but it also sounds really good on drums. Double click it, and it looks like this. I have it set by default to start at four to one compression, which works really well on drums. Then I'll turn on Auto makeup gain. So as we bring down the threshold, the kick won't sound lower in volume. So let's compress this kick. And we can see right over here how much gain reduction or compression we're adding. And besides setting it to four to one, we could also adjust the attack. It'll compress, removing the transients a bit more or less. But I tend to leave this at the default, at least for drums, and the same for the release. We can make it quicker or slower, and it'll react a bit slower. But again, for drums, the default seems to work. So just bring down the threshold before just makes it sound a bit more punchy. And then afterwards, let's EQ the kick. I'll go to my favorites and use re EQ. Just like the compressor, I know you have this plugin. Let's make it a bit bigger. And I don't need the top shoving EQ for kick. So I'll remove it and just use these three bands, which is a low shoving EQ, which boosts the low end from this frequency on down, making it sound more natural than a parametric EQ or band EQ like this one, which just boosts this frequency. 
So let's start by bringing up the low end to make the kick sound deeper. And note the frequency we're adjusting over here, the gain over here, and the bandwidth over here. Double click it to hear it before and after. That sounds pretty good right there. Then we can bring up the top end to give the kick more click or attack. And if we bring it up, notice how wide this EQ is. That's the bandwidth. We can adjust that by holding down the shift key and making it thinner or more narrow or more broad. Let's go about here and bring up the upper mids, which is the top end of a kick. Right about there feels good. And then finally, we could bring down the lower mids to make the kick sound thicker or bigger. Right around here, again, hold the shift key to adjust how wide we do this. Notice how much deeper that sounds before. So we're cutting at about 250 hertz. Before and after. And let's turn off the effects to hear it without the compression or the EQ. And let's hear it with the other drums. Sounds pretty good. So now let's work on the snare. Again, we'll start with the compressor to control the volume, but also make the snare sound more upfront. At four to one, auto makeup gain. Let's bring down the output a bit so I don't overload the channel and bring down the threshold. Notice how much more upfront it sounds before. really makes the snare sound bigger. And again, we could adjust the attack or release, but typically for drums, the default sounds pretty good. And let's add an EQ as well. Now for the snare, I tend to work on the low mids, the high mids, and the highs. So we don't need the low shelving. So we'll remove this band, let's make it a little bigger. And let's start on the upper mids, which will bring out the attack or the crack of the snare. Right about there. And to make it sound prettier, let's bring up the high end shelving right here. Notice how much prettier it sounds, because the high-end shelving EQ boosts the frequency all the way up, creating a more natural sound. Now it's starting to sound a bit thin, 
We can make up for that by adding some low end right here, or lower mids. Make it a bit thinner. Before. And let's hear it before the compressor and EQ. Sounds very weak. After. With the kick. Now, because of the length of this video, I've divided it into three parts. Let's check out part two next. So that's pretty much it. That's mixing real live drums in Reaper. Hope you learned something. Hope you could use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go. Bye.